What's up everyone? Alex here. Atelier Ryza features one of my favorite battle systems this year, but its real-time nature can be overwhelming to players. This guide aims to give you a foundational knowledge of the battle system, allowing you to use this info as a jumping off point to craft your own strategies in the future. Let's start with the basics. While we've been given a tutorial on how to run from battle, the process isn't entirely clear. All you have to do is to press the move button, then move the cursor down until the run option shows up. Just confirm it and you'll run from battle. Now, let's get down to the real reason why you're here. Atelier Rise's battle system is a departure from previous games, combining turn-based strategy with real-time action. Unlike previous games, you only get to control one character at a time, with the game allowing you to switch control at any point. At the heart of this new system is the game's action point or AP system, which you steadily accumulate by having your party members automatically deal normal attack damage to your enemies. While Atelier Ryza's tutorials claim that well-timed button presses are required in order to trigger additional normal attacks for a selected character, you can just mash the attack button and it'll trigger the next attacks with ease. AP is then used as currency to do one of three things. Raise your tactical level, use your skills, and enable quick actions. Let's tackle each of these one by one. Tactical level does a lot for your party. Not only does leveling up your tactical level increase the number of normal attacks your party members can do per turn, earning you more AP in the process, but it also enables skills to do so much more. For example, Lent's Blood Thrust will grant an attack down debuff when your tactical level is at least 2, and heals you for a percentage of the damage dealt at tactical level 4 and above. The tricky thing about tactical level is that you will have to consume all of your maxed out AP in order to level up. For example, if you want to get to tactical level 2, you will have to build your AP to 10, then hit a button to level up. This will not only consume all 10 AP, but it will also increase the next level's AP requirements by 10. In this case, you will now need 20 AP in order to raise your tactical level to 3. Keep in mind that there are some other battle system features that are only available at tactical level 2, so getting to this level should be a high priority at the start of battle. I should also point out that you can keep your AP maxed out provided you don't hit the button to level up. Having a full pool of AP can be advantageous. Skills are physical or magical abilities that spend AP. This includes all offensive physical and magical abilities, as well as healing and support abilities. If you find yourself gaining more AP than you are spending them, I'd consider using skills during battle, as these are often quite powerful and can turn the tide of battle. Also, just to reiterate, certain skills gain new properties depending on the current tactical level. Lastly, Quick Actions allows your selected character to take their turn immediately at the cost of 10 AP. Upon executing this, you will have a choice to either use an item or skill, the latter requiring additional AP to execute. It's because of this that Quick Actions really do require you to be at least Tactical Level 2, as the maximum AP pool at Tactical Level 1 will only allow you to execute the Quick Action, but will leave you with no additional AP left to use for skills you'll only be able to use items. Let's recap things here. You can only control one character at a time in Atelier Ryza, though you can't switch who you control at any time during combat. AP is a currency that is generated every time a party member hits an enemy with a normal attack. You can just mash the attack button on your currently selected character to trigger all of their normal attacks in sequence. Tactical level not only adds an additional normal attack to everyone in your party, but it also alters the quality of certain skills. In order to raise your tactical level, you will have to max out your AP, then press a button to spend all of your AP to raise it. You don't have to level up if you don't have to. Having a full AP pool can be useful. Skills also use AP, and can be used to deal attacks or heal your party. And finally, Quick Actions allow you to take a turn right away for 10 AP, which then allows you to use items or skills, if you have enough AP. Another thing that complicates your choices in battle is Atelier Ryza's order system. The best way to think of this is that it'll allow your other party members to execute an action immediately after your character's turn. All orders request a player to do something with their currently controlled character. 
These requests can be anything from using an item, using a skill, or even more specific actions like healing yourself. There are three kinds of orders that you'll encounter early on. Normal orders don't appear too often, and only appears when a party member is below a quarter health. These orders heal the party member in need. Action orders happen very frequently. These orders will make party members deal massive amounts of damage to your enemy when executed. And finally, extra orders only happen when enemies are either stunned or winding up for a big attack. Extra orders can only be executed via quick action, and both party members act once the request is fulfilled. Extra orders deal even more damage to your enemies, with a really good chance of interrupting their windup or stunning them. The request is usually the execution of a skill, which means you'll need to be at least tactical level 2 to do these orders. One word of caution I will add is that upon fulfilling the requests of any order, you must remember not to switch characters at this time. Doing so will cancel any orders triggered prior. The Core Charge system is another new system in Atelier Ryza. Core Charges allow you to use items without actually consuming them. For players new to Atelier Ryza, you will need to remember to equip your party with items to bring, as you won't have access to all your items once you leave the Atelier. Unlike some other games in the series, any party member can use items, provided that they have items equipped and enough core charges to use. That said, you only have 10 core charges to use across your party. There are a few ways that you can replenish core charges while you're out and about. One way is to temporarily convert an equipped item to core charges to gain all of it back. The downside is that you won't be able to use the converted item until you get back to the atelier. Secondly, Ryza can gain a passive ability called Core Cycler that grants her one core charge at the end of battle. And finally, you can just head back to the atelier. You gotta dump all the things you gathered and filling up your bags anyway, right? We went through a lot of info here, so let's recap. Orders allow other party members to execute an action shortly after the player fulfills their requests. Normal orders are more healing in nature and doesn't happen often. Action orders are the most common orders, often dealing massive amounts of damage to enemies. Extra orders only happen when an enemy is either stunned or winding up for an attack, and can only be executed during a quick action, and often requests the execution of a skill to activate. This deals even more amounts of damage to enemies. Don't forget to equip items before leaving the atelier. Core charges allow any party member to use items. You only get 10 core charges to start with. There are three ways to replenish core charges. One way is to convert an equipped item, which gets you all 10 core charges back. Another way is to unlock Ryza's Core Cycler passive ability that grants you one core charge at the end of battle. And finally, Going back to the Atelier not only re-enables all disabled items, but also grants you 10 core charges. Now that we've gone through the fundamentals of the battle system, it's time we learn about party quests. Atelier Rise's party quests are a way for the game to encourage players to try to put everything they've learned to practice. In turn, party quests unlock new passives, abilities, and increase certain stats for each character. Remember when I said that Ryza can gain a passive that grants her a core charge at the end of every battle? This is how you can unlock that passive ability. Ultimately, the key to victory in Atelier Ryza is knowing when to use your AP to increase your tactical level versus doing anything else that uses AP. One really good suggestion the game gives you early on is to take initiative in battle by hitting enemies on the field, regardless of whether or not they see you, which immediately grants you 10 AP to start. I always try to aim to get to tactical level 2 right away, as the additional normal attack hit really makes a difference in terms of AP generation, which also allows the use of a quick action and a skill should the need arise. Also, try not to obsess about raising your tactical level as high and as fast as possible. There can be moments during battle when you level up your tactical level, spending all your AP, then, all of a sudden, an enemy decides to wind up for a strong attack. While this leaves you with a higher tactical level, it also leaves you with absolutely no AP to do an extra order with. It then becomes a race to build that AP up, which often ends up with the enemy finishing their windup and delivering their big attack in the process. At the end of the day, your decision making will all go down to how to properly anticipate these big attacks, all the while making sure that your party is taken care of in the interim. 
and the more you think of utilizing AP to either raise your tactical level or anything else that uses it, you'll start noticing that you'll be making better decisions the more you play. Also, given how AP is technically an endless resource, consider using Claudia's healing melody to get everyone's health back up prior to finishing the battle. This beats having to spend core charges outside of battle to heal the entire party. One last piece of advice that I wish to impart is to take advantage of the game's fast travel system. Early on, you'll only be able to return to your room as an option, but progressing through the story will enable you to fast travel to any zone in the game that you've explored. When you find yourself in a new area, don't hesitate to return to your atelier to store all of your collected materials, craft better weapons or armor, replenish your health, core charges, and automatically re-enabling any items that were converted. There's plenty of benefits to going back, and don't forget to save your progress while you're at it. Phew, that's a lot to cover, but I do hope that you gleaned a lot of information from this video. As with the crafting synthesis tutorial, please post any additional questions you may have in the comments below so we can all talk about it. Your enjoyment of the game is important to me, and if there's any way that I can help when talking about the combat, I'll gladly reply and help you all out. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a great gaming week.